You know, I've, I've told you guys um, for, for a very long time that um, I wanted to be remembered when I left the sport. And I think uh, when you get into doing things that have never been done before, that, that ensures that I will always be thought of when you think about the greatest fighters of all time. It's uh, truly, truly uh, amazing. And then to do it in Madison Square Garden, it, w it was just insane. Sometimes I go into the octagon and I hear it in the buildup, like, when is this guy going to get old? You know, it could happen overnight. I thought it happened this morning. I sneezed. And I slipped my back out, guys. I was hurting bad. Like, seriously, I was... We got some pictures that we may release later in the week, but, like, I, I sneezed, and because I sneezed, my back slipped out. And I was... I went to try to do my morning run, and it wasn't happening. I, uh... Went back in the UFC, you know, they have uh, the Performance Institute, they travel with us now. So Heather Linden and uh, Clint Wattenberg, they came over with the massage table, with the stem machine, with all kinds of uh, stuff to try to help me release my back. And then at around 12, 1 o'clock, it was to the point that I was still kind of singed over and leaning that Bob Cook was all, uh, if you don't get better, then we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to fight. So it was real close. I said, just let me take a nap. I said, if you let me take a nap, I'll see if uh, if I feel better. And I woke up and, and uh, went and went for a walk. And when I went for a walk and got active, uh, my back started to release a little bit. It was very scary because I really had no idea how we were going to explain that one. Sometimes you can almost mentally make yourself feel better. Like, uh, but again, this is three three week training camp, and generally when I'm in fight camp, at about three weeks, my back does kind of go bad, and then I have to take a few days off to recover. But I usually have five weeks left of training. It just so happened that it happened on the day of the fight. But once I got into the octagon, we just made a we had a real focus of of being uh, being very bundled up and just really hot. Once I got warm, I mean my locker room was the temperature was at about 85 degrees. Because once I got warm, I needed to stay warm. I was wearing old busted up sweatpants, uh, Oklahoma State wrestling sweat top, because I needed to make sure that uh, once I once I got hot and I got sweating, I didn't cool down. Because when you when you have a, when your back's bothering you, when you cool down, it's over. Like you are done for the rest of the afternoon. It would have been unfortunate if I was done for the rest of the night. The last one, the farewell fight. Yep, that could be the retirement fight for old DC. That's crazy, right? When you start to think about it, uh, you know, talk about having an opportunity to go out on an all-time high, you know, headlining in Vegas against Brock Lesnar. Uh, before I turned 40, two weeks before my birthday, have my biggest fight. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. But I'm glad that he wants me to take some time because I stepped up on short notice. And honestly, I've fought three times this year with three finishes. Three championship fights, three finishes. You know, I've had a big year. I think he can test me. I mean, I, he's a big, strong guy. And he his wrestling kind of cancels out my biggest advantage over most people. This guy's an NCAA wrestling champ. He's a, a four-time All-American, uh, was second as a junior, two-time junior college national champ. I mean, Brock is a beast, man. I know I talk a lot of trash about him, but he is a real-life beast. And he's a guy that, that is going to uh, really push me. And I'm excited about it. When this dude hit me, I was like, holy smokes. I don't know if he, like, just, like, threw it as hard as he possibly could or what. But it was powerful. I was like, wow, Derek Lewis is really powerful. I was like, I need to stay on this dude's legs. So I just kept wrestling. I mean, I just kept wrestling. My boys at Gilroy will be proud. They'll be proud. You know, all my little wrestlers will be proud about uh, Coach going out there, securing some takedowns. Uh, first takedown, I got him uh, with that inside trip. Second one was a, a single leg, ran the pipe. Third one was uh, I, I shelved his leg up and threw him down. And the last one, I actually got a front headlock to an ankle pick, yeah. which is something you don't generally get in fights. But he had kind of gotten lost. You know, he, like, we like to say lost in the sauce. You know, you give them so many things that they can't keep up. Because in fighting, a lot of guys have good baseline defense. So you just keep throwing things at him until something sticks at the wall. Keep throwing at the wall, throwing at the wall, something will stick. Uh, that ankle pick knocked him back, and he kind of looked like, ah, again, I'm on my back again, you know. And and then Coach uh, Leandro said, uh, KC control. It's a system that we've worked for a long time, check mat. 
And uh, when he did it, I covered the legs, and he turned back to his knees and just presented his neck. I mean, he's the first guy, though, that when I've got him in half guard, I start to punch him, and he turns to his knees, and I catch the inside wrist. I love to do that. That's like my favorite position, grabbing the inside wrist and just starting to let go with the other hand. He still got up. That's how strong this dude was. And I was holding his wrist, and he still got to his feet. It was it was crazy. Uh, you know, he's not as good as Stipe, obviously. Stipe is... Uh, the, the the most successful heavyweight champ we've ever had. You know, he's a, he's a tremendous fighter, and he's, he's really good. Derek is a specialist. A lot of times, specialists really struggle with guys that can do just about everything because the reality of the situation is if I was forced to stand with him, I would have, you know, but he did not have the same option as me when it came to the grappling, right? He... I could have stood with him if I needed to, but I didn't need to because of the wrestling. He can obviously stand with me, but he can't grapple with me. He does not have that ability, and specialists tend to struggle like that, just like the jiu-jitsu guys. When they can only grapple, they struggle when they're forced to stand. You've got to be a well-rounded mixed martial artist if you want to be successful in this game. I've always had full arenas. You know, whether they're booing me or cheering me, I've always had full arenas, which is... Which is uh, a really uh, good thing, you know. Um, Buffalo last year was filled to the brim when I fought against uh, Anthony Johnson. Um, obviously, uh, when Jones and I fight, it's always full. Uh, Gustafson in Houston, full. Like, every time I fight, it's full. My next fight, when it comes to Lesnar, I, I got to be honest with you guys. Like, when it comes to negotiating, like, I kind of just ask, and they just kind of do it. Like, it's really not like me going, I want... Three million dollars, and they go no. It's almost like, oh, okay, you kind of deserve it, and they just kind of been doing it. Like it's, a, it's just like when you do things the right way, they kind of uh, they they respect that. And Dana White's that type of guy, you know. He he really does take care of me in a lot of different ways. Okay, so today I weighed two forty seven. Yesterday I weighed two fifty one. So maybe I should have like, not had breakfast before weigh-ins, <laughs> but uh, I cut from this weight to two oh five. Like, there's no difference in what I weigh today in, as to what I weigh uh, when I fight 205. Last Thanksgiving, got a little crazy, and uh, I, got, I got this scale in my house, which I, and I swear that it's heavy, but I don't think it is. Um, and I got all my clothes. You know when you're, like, scared to get on the scale because you're like, I'm going to wear my clothes to try to lie to myself and say I got 10 pounds of clothes on? And instead, I weighed 260 pounds the day after Thanksgiving. And I weighed in at 205 on January 19th to fight Vulcan. So, I mean, I'm, I know how to make, I'll go cut the weight if I have to. But that won't happen for anyone. That'll only happen if Lesnar isn't available and then I get to fight Jones. It's the only way. It's hard for me to, it's hard for me to really take anything seriously. Because you say, I don't want to give you a shot and, uh, you don't deserve it. I beat you. He said he knocked me out, which he did. And you guys know I've always said he won the fight. And uh, he once put like a video up of a little girl kicking a girl in the head. And I said, look, man, she set that kick up perfect. But you who are on steroids, dog, you can't use that. <laughs> the same thing. Like, I'm sh sure USADA said whatever, you know, but still had steroids in your system. It does not matter. You can't be on steroids in no way, shape, or form. That's not fair. So for him to say, I don't think he deserves a title shot, or I'm not going to grant him, who are you to grant me anything? I'm the guy that's been here this whole time. Three years I've been the light heavyweight champion because this dude can't stay out of trouble. He, he, he That dude actually got in so much shit that they just said, here, DC, you can have the belt back last year after he knocked me out. Like, seriously. <laughs> How crazy must the, the guy that won be for them to go, hey, man, you can just have this back. <laughs> Seriously. Because we know with you, shit's safe. You know, that shit's safe in San Jose. With you, it's safe. But with this dude, like, we don't know what he going to do. He punched me. Maybe he didn't feel me punching him, but I, I know he punched me, and okay. he kicked me. But um, uh, it was a punch. Yeah, when I had his leg up on my shoulder, I think he just kind of reached back and punched me. I mean, you guys saw the fight. I was in there. I don't know what the hell was going on. I was trying to just survive. Yeah, I mean, it just, 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 
It's that conflict doesn't always work, right? Conflict doesn't always work. Now, there have been times where I've been pissed off. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I didn't get... I got pissed off when Jones got reinstated. And uh, they tried to call me, and I wasn't very nice in the conversations that we had with them or USADA. I mean, there have been times where we haven't agreed on things. Um, it's just that after I talk, most times with Dana, you know, we sit down and we talk about things and we hash it out, and it works. It just kind of works. Like... I'm not, I'm not a young guy. You know, I'm an older guy that understands that it's usually better to try to resolve things than to continue down the path of just being um, just in conflict. So uh, it just works. And honestly, if you're looking at the guys that have benefited from the, uh, the, the, the issues with the company and then you watch the guy that hasn't, it seems to work. I am make I make a ton of money every time I fight. Every time I fight, I make a ton of money. And when I don't make a ton of money fighting, I'm making a ton of money calling fights or doing something else for the UFC. It works. There's no reason to... Uh, I mean, it just, it just closes so many doors because then you become hard to work with. It's like any other job. And I'm not sitting here like saying, I don't have my issues because I do. I, and I'm very vocal about my issues. They're just not public. As I don't talk about the arguments I have with my wife or with my parents or anybody, I don't need to talk about the, the issues I have with uh, the UFC. But, like, going through your messages afterwards is the worst. <laughs> it literally takes hours because everybody seems to text you, and then they get mad at you, like, hey, man, I called you. I'm like, of course you did. Everybody did. It's like, how am I supposed to answer the phone for every single person? Why didn't you text me back? I'm like, and initially I didn't take that scene thing off of my phone, so they would look at it when I saw their messages. <laughs> Thank God for Danny Rubenstein. He told me how to take it off. Like, they would see scene, and I'd be like, I, I know you saw it. I'm like, no, I didn't. They're like, dude, screen grab. Like, you saw my, my text, and I'm just like, I dead silent. 